My guest on today's episode is Shara Humphreys, a professional organizer exclusively focused on photo organization. Her business, Simple Photo Stories, based in Atlanta, Georgia, provides photo organizing services both in person and remotely, and I am so excited for her to share the story of her unique niche and the resources that she provides to other organizers who might want to add photo organizing to their offerings as well. Shara is super fun to hear from. Enjoy. You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio Podcast with Jen Obermeyer. Thank you for joining in. Jen makes it her mission to broaden the horizons of savvy businesswomen in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. She is a devoted business coach and founder of the Inspired Organizer Program. You'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. And now, let's get started. Thank you, Shara, so, so much for joining me on the podcast today. Well, thank you, Jen, for having me. Absolutely. I am, so, so first of all, for our audience who's listening, Shara, Shara and I are like, are like sisters who never knew each other because her, her business, PPO Studio, which stands for Professional Photo Organizer Studio. Is that right, Shara? Yes. Yes. Okay, so so we found each other, and here I am, Pro Organizer Studio, and we ha- have been on our, our own tracks in life, not knowing each other existed, but I guess it was like meant to be, um, because we have, now, we have now met, and Shara has built her own business, and then also does training around photo organizing for other people, and she helps other people become photo organizers and make that like a business in itself, which is so fascinating to me, and we clearly... We're just like cut from the same cloth. So I'm really excited to have this conversation today because I know that a lot of my listeners out there who either are professional organizers or are thinking about it or maybe have always wanted to add this to their business, but they didn't really know how. Um, I'm really excited to have Shara on to talk about her story and how this came to be. So Shara, will you please tell us um, just sort of how this came to be for you? Well, thank you. And yes, I do feel like we're sisters from another mister kind of thing, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, um, many, years apart though. So I have four children and I've always worked from home even before I got married. And so I've been in the photo industry for a very long time. And when I say how long, then I feel super old. So I'm not going to say how many years, many That is quite okay. years. <laughs> but when I, when I tell you that my children are Children are not children. They're 30, and I have 28-year-old twins and a 21-year-old. Uh, you know that I've been a mom in the trenches with um, so many others who want to work from home, and mm-hmm. that was a real desire for me. And so from that uh, was born an, this thing that I just loved photos and stories, and I always felt like it was so important that people be able to tell their stories. And I saw women getting stuck over baby books and the guilt of, you know, the photos and boxes. And, you know, back in the day, in my day, they went to a photo developer at, at a grocery or, you know, a big store and got that envelope and couldn't wait to open it in the car. They open their photos that way, printed printed photos, which might be a little (laughs) archaic in 2020. Now the new shoebox is our phone. It's the phone. Oh gosh, uh, yes. You know, you've got some people have thousands on their phone, and uh, it's this kind of this secret mother guilt that it's not organized. And so, been helping women do that and tell their stories for many years. And then I have my own photo organizing business where I help. Uh, VIP clients, not just in Atlanta where I am, but uh, remotely as well. And then I have a business partner in Boston and we train photo organizers, much like you train professional organizers. And really the difference for us is this is just such a little specialized niche or mm, niche, mm-hmm. right? So that that's what the photo organizing industry is about. It's been alive and well, I think for about 10 years in, in the, I guess, you know, public circles of the photo industry. Like people didn't even know it existed and uh, it does, it's thriving and you can have a thriving business with it. Yeah. Okay. So this is fascinating to me on so many levels. I have so many questions <laughs> um, <laughs> per usual. Um, part of my podcast hosting is always me learning things for myself as well, because these, these conversations are so good. So you really hit on a pain point for me when you said that secret mother guilt 
of having all these photos in my phone and then even still feeling like I don't take enough pictures, <laughs> you know, yeah. because I'm not doing, I'm not, I don't know. It's like, I know that they're there and I know I haven't right. lost them. And so it almost, even for like someone who like me, who, it, you know, I, I like being an organized person. It still feels like that, like last project that's always going to stay at the bottom of the list and it doesn't become a priority. So I hear you and I yeah. feel it and I know the pain of it because the mother guilt that we sprinkle and pour on ourselves and each other accidentally when we have this perfectly <laughs> curated life. I, I think that mm -hmm. social media has made it worse than when I had young kids at home because we're always comparing ourselves, you know, like, oh, look, she's got her stuff all together and I don't. And I hope no one ever finds out, but I'm going to mm -hmm. fake it till I make it. And so, oh, and then coupled with it, you said it's, so it's the last thing on the list. But what's interesting to me is it's the first thing that people would grab in a fire or a flood, you know, hurricane in a so natural true. disaster. Like forget the couch, it's floating away. Uh, I can buy a new couch. I can't buy more memories, right? And oh, yeah. it, it's, it's one of these gut punches that, that moms are like, I mean, it really like when I just said that, it gives me goosebumps still because if I can help a mom release the guilt and feel like she's got her photos under control, then I've done, done my job here on earth. I, I just, oh. it makes me happy because it shouldn't feel overwhelming. It shouldn't be a stress point. And what I really find interesting in the organizing world, because, you know, that's where you and I both live, is organizers. I have spoken to so many different organizers who I, I heard a speaker one time say, we have a mind of order. That's just, we're, mm. we're drawn to organizing. Not every woman is a good organizer. Some right. don't have that gift. I think it really is a gift. And so they can organize the heck out of a pantry and their closet and garage and their house is just sparkling. And, and yet the photos, mm. <laughs> they're mm -hmm. the hidden, they're the hidden guilt sometimes, right? Like you said. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and it's like, but you could put, put those away. So the organizers come upon in a house, they're organizing a big box of photos that someone inherited, the print photos, or, or, you know, they're doing digital organizing because that's also another niche, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and they're like, oh yeah, we can handle that later. We'll, we'll tackle that later. Exactly. Or we'll just put it in a really pretty box. Let's put it, let's not have a cardboard box. Let's get a, a really pretty box. I'll label for you. Yep. <laughs> that says that's unsorted photos. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh my gosh. So, okay. So tell me when someone, when someone does hire you as a photo organizer, can you kind of like walk us through just, you mentioned that you can do it in person and you can work with the physical items or you can do the digital organizing of like digital photos. Like what are the, what are the like potential kind of paths forward to, in order to finally reach that goal of having organized photos that they know where they all are and they can actually do something with them and share them. Yeah. So if I were helping you as a mom with young kids, the very first thing I want to know is what's most important to you about your photos right now. And if mm -hmm. I could wave a magic wand, tell me what you want. So for you and then for someone else, it's going, your answer is going to be different. So it's in, incredibly customized because maybe mm -hmm. you've inherited a box and that is weighing on you heavily. Maybe your kids, tell me again how old your children are. Jean. Mine are 11 and nine. So at 11 and nine, and this is zero guilt, maybe you don't have a baby book for them and you've always wanted one. <laughs> I never asked you that, right? Can I tell you, can I tell you, I made, I made my first photo book for my daughter when she was 10. So okay. it would kind of, it kind of encompassed like baby book all uh -huh. the way to like our first 10 years. And I've already realized that I haven't started working on my son and it's <laughs> going to be due in about uh, eight more months. <laughs> okay. So really nice, nice news here. Yeah. There's there's no guilt or problem with starting when the kids are even grown and doing a baby yeah, book. True. I mean, yeah, you know, that's what I did. <laughs> uh, th there's some really cool things that photos do and you know, they bring back so many emotions and memories. Almost always good except for the mother guilt, which we just have mm -hmm. to let go of and we have to mm -hmm. be we have to offer ourselves grace on that. And we can put together anything um and it can be, you know, the compilation of a child's life from zero to 10. It can be zero to five. It can be zero to 21. Uh, 
Everyone loves a book of their life, the story of me, right? Like that's, Mm -hmm. you know, who doesn't like that? And there are all kinds of studies about what that does to a kid's self-esteem and and feeling Mm. loved and wanted. I mean, the... The, the pros, you know, the pros and cons of this, the pros are so endless in the time that you spend doing it. And then for people who don't want to spend time, just like some people don't want to spend time organizing, but they'd love to hire someone to come in and yeah. do it for them. Hello. That's what professional organizers can do. They can add this as a service and help other mothers. And it is typically mothers. There are a few men, but mostly, I mean, I don't want to, you know, diss on the guys, but moms are the memory keepers and the family Mm. photo historians. So Mm -hmm. I just Mm want to find out what you want. And then I want to customize a plan to help get you there. And I can do almost all of it for you. There's very little. I have, I have questions for you, you know, if I'm doing, I'm in that role as the organizer, but uh, you know, and training photo organizers, we talk about just language skills and talking softly and nicely and not making it this big, huge, overwhelming project. I mean, I've, I've seen right. organizers who create a spreadsheet and have insisted that their client fill out things on a spreadsheet before they get started. And then I start laughing. I'm like, mm, mm-hmm. mm, that's going to be tough for you. Overwhelming. You, you yeah. might be going down the wrong path because what if, what if that mother doesn't want to fill out a spreadsheet? <laughs> Yeah. And doesn't oh, like yeah. spreadsheets or maybe she works in <laughs> spreadsheets all day long and she doesn't want her photo life to become a spreadsheet. So, Oh yeah. That's a know? good point. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, okay. So you're telling me too, like, let's discuss this part. If I, if I do, if like say, and maybe it's partially my age or my stage of life, but most of mine are on the computer. Mm-hmm. So I could hire someone to do this with me slash for me. And it could even be remote. You don't even, it doesn't even have to be somebody who's in my area. Absolutely. So So tell me more about what that looks like. Yeah. So with the advent of screen sharing and all the technology, you know, technology is our friend and, uh, you Mm -hmm. know, I say technology, don't let it be the boss of you. Right. I mean, (laughs) that's another reason that the photo thing gets in the way. So I find it interesting. Moms can curate their life on social media, but then they freeze at their own family photos. So (laughs) I I know that they have some technology skills, almost all. Always. Uh, and all we need to do is figure out a way to shuttle, as I like to say, those photos to my computer and we use an external hard drive and I, you know, I'm not going to get all techie with you, but I, I can manage your whole collection from my computer and then I could share things with you online so you can be excited and fall in love mm. with your photos instead mm-hmm. of feel, because here's another thing, you know, when you say you, I loved when you said I take so many photos, but then I feel like I might not be taking enough photos. Yeah. Right. So yeah. we all have a lot of screenshots on our phone. Yes. <laughs> and we have a lot of digital, what, you know, what we call digital clutter and those probably don't make us as happy as that's one special picture with the kids or you caught the kids being nice to each other or playing or having fun or just in a quiet moment. Those are the moments. Those are the photos that we want to make sure we preserve. So I want to bring those back in your life and you don't have to scroll through your phone in the thousands and find that picture. Oh gosh. I mean, just hearing you talk about this, I mean, selling this has to be the easiest thing in the world because just, just having this conversation, it reminds me not of guilt, but it does remind me of all those things that, yes, I wish I had that. Yes, this is really important to me. It's just something that has been so, so like put off for so long. I, I mean, I feel, and maybe you can speak to this from a business point of view, that once people know that you exist and that you have a service that can help them, do you, do you feel like it's pretty easy to like get them on board where they're just like, yes, like I've been wanting this forever. That is the most fun part of it. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. I mean, Amazing. I'm not, yeah. you know, I, I don't have to really look for clients and, and yeah. that sounds like, um, Gosh, I don't want to say business is easy because you know it's not. And working from home is not easy. But getting clients and finding people who think this is important and and touching on their pain points and the emotions involved in this, uh, you know, it's really just one of those things where you have to match uh, where they're at and, uh, work with the willing, right? Like I'm, Uh I'm not, Mm -hmm. I'm not hunting for anyone who doesn't want their photos organized. Right. Right. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So 
Shara, um, when, when people, when people do find out, first of all, like you said, this gotta be the easiest thing in the world to sell, but, but when, when organizers who want to maybe add this or somebody comes along and just says, I want to be a photo organizer, I'm all in, what kinds of questions are they asking you in terms of, um, the technical side of digital organizing? Like how, how good do they have to be at technology in order to consider doing digital photo organizing? All right. I love that question, Jen. So I think women put that obstacle in front of themselves immediately. I'm not techie. I, I you know, right. I don't think I could do digital. What if I only want to do print because I'll help people with old photos because I hate the computer or whatever. Now there is some validity to that because if you don't want to work on the computer all day, then digital photo organizing isn't going to be something that you're going to be happy doing. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you like the computer and you're not afraid of it, then you can learn any parts of this um, very easily. I think one of the most important things we like people to know is that it changes so often. I've seen people spend a year getting ready to be in business and practicing mm -hmm. on their own collection <laughs> and practicing on apps and software and all these things. And they're, they're afraid that in front of the client, they won't be confident and they won't have the answer. And when in fact, I could go to a client that I've been working with for six years and she could ask me something right now that I don't know. And I right. just have to say, let me get back to you. What exactly. she's paying me for is for me to Google it, not her. That's what she thinks. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I mean, let's get real. Everyone has their best friend Google in the house. Some people don't want to use it, or maybe they want to Google other things other than how to get my photos from A to B or, you know, how to back them up from my phone to my hard drive or whatever. You can, that's all teachable. You can learn that. So yes. I don't think that should be the number one obstacle in starting a digital photo organizing business. I think it's, it's one of those things, uh, again, and I know you're really good at this uh, because that's one of the reasons that I've loved reading your stuff and listening to your podcast. So I define it as those hard skills and soft skills. You have to be good at soft skills to own your own business. The hard skills, any day, you can learn that anytime right? Yes. If, if you find the thing you want to do, and if you're an organizer and you have that mind of order by nature, then mm -hmm. just keep getting better at your soft skills and then your hard skills anytime, anytime. You can, you can learn that, right? And yeah, boy, definitely. Is there a good time right now in our upside down world to learn some new hard and soft skills? <laughs> No, absolutely. And so let's talk about that for a second. So um, at the time of this recording, it is May 2020. And <laughs> let's not even, we don't even have to talk about all of the <laughs> organizers who would have been in client homes that are sitting at home and going, okay, I'm ready to get back to work. I am restless. I don't feel like I'm... <laughs> You know, like they had, they're used to their like, you know, doing and contributing and helping. And then they still have, some of them still have clients that are calling them saying, don't you still want to come over? And they're like, oh my God. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's been a big, um, this is a major thing to go through and we're not done with it yet. So when you're, when you're talking about learning, th this is not just about learning new skills, but even adding revenue streams to an existing business. It doesn't require you to change businesses. And it's something that maybe that you add now and it's not, a, it, it doesn't become a temporary thing. Maybe this becomes part of your long-term strategy to kind of diversify some of the things you're offering your clients so that you do have the option in the future. Do you want to be out, you know, in working with people's closets? And then sometimes do you want to like have the ability to work from home and still be making money? It's the smartest thing in the world. <laughs> Multiple revenue streams yes. can just be still my heart. That's important, right? Like as yes. a business owner and so that you're not frozen. I mean, we couldn't ever have predicted what we're living through now, mm -hmm. but if you have multiple income streams, then you aren't frozen in time and, and thinking where, how can I make money now? Right. Absolutely. So it's, it's a beautiful thing in the organizing world that people still want this and organizing is showing up on every list that you read, every meme, you know, what should I do? Yeah. <laughs> I'm bored. And, and, and if you have kids that are bored, Hey, you know what? Why don't you give them the box of photos? They could join in. I mean, there's, there's yeah. so many activities that you could center around this, but in business, 
hello. Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. remotely, we're, we're experiencing the same thing in our, in our photo organizing training and, and our membership site so that people are like, what do I do? Because so, you know, I don't want to go to a client's house. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I don't want to sit with them and sort photos. This is not my thing right now. I don't feel comfortable. So remotely, yeah. And, and I know that, uh, you know, organizers are getting creative. They're doing virtual remote, you know, online mm -hmm. organizing sessions. Mm -hmm. Now for me and, and my clients and, and in the way that I want to work, if I wanted someone to organize my client, I sure don't want to do it over the computer. I want someone to come to my house and do it. <laughs> sure. Oh, but, I, hear, I hear you. It's not for everybody. Right. For but, sure. but that you can offer it, that's that's a beautiful thing, and that's what I think that people have to pivot on right now and and add those services. Like you said, it could be temporary or it can be a part of your long term business strategy. Yes, I, I completely agree. Smart. Yeah, um, and and let me ask you this too, because here's the beautiful thing about the internet is the internet's not closed. So everybody <laughs> who has an online like an online only business now, of course, you may see like dips in activity and everything, but there's not like you had to close the door, the door just because of germs, which is great. Now, so my question for you is, have you, um, even during this, like, you know, downtime in terms of, uh, I don't know if it's just the economy or just people not really having a focus and not being able to sort of commit to things. Have you still like for your, for your, your students and your clients who have photo organizing businesses, have they seen any particular change in, you know, new clients or new projects? Like, are people really wanting to dig into this right now because they have time? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had someone in our forum say that she had five phone assessment appointments during one week. And I think it was in like two days. That's incredible. So I don't think so. I think that where it becomes difficult is for people just starting out. Like it, it's kind yeah. of, it, it's a confidence, you know, it's, it, it's a demotivator if it, if, you know, it's hard already. So I think one of those things is you have to decide that mindset right now. You have to, you know, really set your mind to, I'm going to stay in business. I'm mm -hmm. not going to shut this down. I'm not going to say, oh, I didn't get fully started or whatever that is. Don't let that happen. I would encourage women to say, stay the course because the ones that are left standing, are going to be the most memorable for those clients who did have to pause things for whatever reason, whether it was financial or just, you know, kind of this brain fog, we feel like we're all in. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think that, I think that you've got to keep going. So no, I haven't seen, I mean, my clients aren't telling me to slow down or stop. They're like, uh, do you have that done yet? And I'm like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then I say, oh, can, can I have another week, please? I, <laughs> I don't remember what day it is. And yeah, I know, I know. I, I said, we're, I, we're I'm all struggling. The, I'm the slowest yeah. photo organizer on the planet right now. Okay. But, but that's yeah. just how it is. And everyone, and that comes back to that word grace and that we're all giving each other more grace during this time. Mm, that's really important. Are you loving the Pro Organizer Studio podcast? I know that's a mouthful, so we call it T-Pop for short. Help us reach new listeners and bring in even more amazing guests by leaving a review for T-Pop through your podcasting app. It truly makes our day to know that you are listening. I, I do want to say too, and, and you and I mentioned before this, that this episode, I know will be one of our most popular ones because one, we've never talked about this before. And two, it is that important. Um, so I want to make sure, and I want to ask you this question about kind of the future, because even two, three, five years from now, when we're not talking about COVID anymore, I still want people to be listening and, and hearing the alignment of how well this can serve people for a long, long time and to be something good for, for you um, in your business. One, uh, and I've mentioned this on the podcast before, because organizing, like people who do traditional home organizing is a very physical job. So maybe sometimes you want to have organizing projects where you are sitting a little bit more and not like hauling boxes up and down stairs. Yeah. So, that, yeah. so that's a big deal. And then the other thing that I see that's a big deal in terms of like future and forward focus is that, Cher, I'm sure you've read these things just like I have. Like, the way that, you know, the baby boomer population is like 20% of the U S by like in 2030 is going to be at retirement age or older. And so right. you've got like the aging, like baby boomer population and their parents right now. Um, and so 
one thing you mentioned was, you know, different generations and ages and stages of life, we tend to maybe have more physical archives versus digital archives. And I am sure that no matter what age you are, there's going to be a, a project at some point where you have your parents or your grandparents or your own physical photos that you want digitized like moving towards the future so that you can actually continue to share it with, with your family. You've got it. So that <laughs> digit, that digital part, every single person, even if they're a digital baby, right? They never had a printed photo in their life. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know those people are out there. I'm that sure, old. Sure. Absolutely. But uh, they're going to inherit photos. They're going to inherit mm -hmm. their, their parents or their grandparents, and they're going to have a box of musty old photos that they think, oh, what do I do? And then there's this moment where they realize, and maybe it's not right now in their 20s and creeping in their 30s, uh, that their stories are in there. Their yeah. heritage is in there. They're, they're, that's part of their whole story. So the other part of it is those baby boomer moms, uh, you know, that are empty nesters and, and that reaching retirement age and, and different things happening in their life, big changes. It's that reinvention stage, right? Like, what do I do now? And so organizers have found that to be one of those things that they, they love. They've always been good at it. They ran a house, they ran a tight ship and they could be an organizer. Is this, you know, there, there are moms my age that didn't know professional organizers exist still. I've always right. known that. I'm like, yes, hallelujah. And so <laughs> yes. then you add photo organizing into that as a revenue stream with that business. And you've really got such a great opportunity to to move forward and work for as long as you want. Like you said, I, yeah. I know pro organizers who are they're done. They don't want to do garages, right? They they've, yes. they've already <laughs> cut back, right? They're like I'm taking garages off my list, okay? And I'm going to take any you know really heavy lifting and the the fatigue and you know strain and all of that. So then photo organizing can become you know that other service that they add or I've, I've, we've trained pro organizers that have gone totally photo organizing. They've, they've transitioned their business to all photo organizing. So uh, yeah, it's, it's available. It's out there. And right now, wow, what a, I just think, I don't want to say, Ooh, what an opportunity because ew, that doesn't feel good. I don't think anything feels like a, an opportunity right now. Um, in terms of our world but as you said this isn't going to go away and our photos and our memories and the stories behind them uh timeless really. yeah 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 and when yeah absolutely and i just can envision you know whether you're a part of the baby boomer generation or not there's going to be so many people who are moving into that stage of life where they want to make sure that they have done something with their stuff before they <laughs> leave it without having told those stories or having digitized it and all that. And so I just, I can see it becoming a priority for a large group of people over the next 10 and 20 years. And so, you know, any, any business, and when we're talking about opportunity, it's just the opportunity to serve, you know, any business that really is focusing in on, you know, the baby boomer generation and what their needs are going to be um, is going to always have a client base because they're, that's just, it's a large group of people and they've got, and you know, some of them <laughs> have money well, to spend on these that, things. I, I was just going to say, yeah. and let's be real. They have more money than a lot of people. Absolutely. And, uh, that, yeah. and you have to have clients that will pay you. So in business, right? And, yep. or you're not really in business. Uh, oh, we, we, so. we, <laughs> You, we must have gone to the same school of thought because that's what I say all the time. I'm not, I'm not, I'm still not embarrassed or ashamed or anything to talk about money or say that I want to and need to make money in my business. I want a profitable business. So mm -hmm. those baby boomers that need your help, you know, out there for all these things, they're downsizing. Maybe they're moving to a smaller house and they start uncovering all of these things and they need organizers to help them first. I mean, you know, you know, the list is endless about how organizers can help people and oh, yeah. life changing. And then you add photos in the mix of that. And, and I can't think of a better business to be in it. <laughs> both of us yeah. know that we're in it. Why? I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not, I haven't thought for one minute, mm, I need to change my business. I'm not changing my business. 
Oh, I wanted to tell you though, we, we put together a donation, a charity donation, you know, the pay what you want is Mm -hmm. kind of popular. Well, it was popular anyway, but now even more so. And one day in March in a fog, I said, what if we did a donate what you can, if you can. And so we Mm -hmm. put together a photo legacy bundle. And that is just something that if people want to donate and organize their photos when they want to, not when they're told to. Uh, right. So it's Got you. Yeah. out to the world and something we could do that felt good. Wonderful. I think that you've, you've done this really brilliantly, yeah. honestly. So, <laughs> well, and back to you. Yeah. So wow. have you. And so I think that for people who are listening and thinking, you know, could I do this? Could I do this? With Jen's help, with our help, depending Mm -hmm. on how you want to specialize and what you want to do, yes, you can and you should and you should go for it because the need is enormous. And if you're thinking of your own reinvention, I think it's the perfect time. There's there's Mm -hmm. no better time. Absolutely. I I love it. I'll say too, you know, I, uh, you know, there will be some economic and like you said, just sort of the brain fog downturn of like activity that home organizers who are working in the house and, you know, doing the things that they normally were doing up until this point, I don't think those things are going away either. I, you know, I think maybe the, the nature of projects will shift some or the, or the, who your clients are will shift some, but there will still be a need because, because anytime there's change and stress is when things get overwhelming and the, the need to have somebody else to come in and help is still going to be there. However, I'm always telling people that they need to, well, one, not only like maybe have some diversification of how they're making money, but also I'm always saying to people, choose a niche. And then a lot of people are like, I hear you saying that and I haven't really found my thing yet. And this could be that thing that serves not, not just the need to have a niche, but also you can still, you can still do it in home. You can do it digit, uh, you know, remotely and digitally and then have clients from anywhere. I mean, what, what you guys have done is you've have created a program to help people do that. So I love that you say find a niche. And what I share with uh, people who want to start a business is as they start to find their niche and figure out what to specialize in, everything in business is an experiment. And so why not, ex- yeah. why not experiment with this? I mean, maybe, maybe you are really good at pantries and closets. I mean, maybe you just have this name. I know financial or- organizers. I know all kinds of the niches in there, senior move managers. You know, there's all kinds out there. But maybe photos is one of yours and maybe you don't have to have just one, but if you do, I I just think you test them out. You give it a try and you experiment and then you figure out what you love. Right. And I, I want to go back to something you said about clients right now with people in business and asking, you know, are they seeing a downturn right now? They're not. But if you are an organizer and you have your past clients who you can't go to the house right now, why wouldn't you want to touch base with them and say, Hey, listen, right now I've added something new and I, and I Mm. thought of you and I thought, Mm. remember Mm. that box of photos we put in the hall closet Um, or, you know, your digital pictures I've been working and use those as your Guinea pigs test out with three of your favorite clients, right? Test that out and, and see if you like doing it. Right. And if you don't, you can, you can pivot again, but experiment with it. What, what's I love the that. that. I love when, I mean, exactly. I, I like that you're saying, you know, you don't have to go all in to dip your toe in the water <laughs> and find out like, do I feel as passionate about this as I think that I might, you know, cause yeah. doing, doing it, doing it and thinking about it are two different things for sure. But listen, if, <laughs> if I, if I were, if I were still actively organizing with clients, this would absolutely be something to be right up my alley. And, um, actually Shara, if you don't mind me telling a quick story, one of the, one of the very first organizing projects that I have, that I was ever given, or I really asked for it and I was given it, um, was a digital organizing project, which involved scanning my grandfather's 35 millimeter slides Mm. And it took me four years to do it. (laughs) It was not, it was a, it was, there were over 10,000 of those slides and he had captions written on all of them. Mm. And I put all of that into like he bought all I wanted. I didn't even want him to pay me at first. I just said, if you'll just buy me the scanner, then I'll just start working on it. And then I realized like what a huge, like (laughs) what a huge project that I had on my hands. But once he, once he had 
those pictures in like a, in a shareable format because nobody was, you know, coming to his house and watching them on his projector anymore. Um, once he had those in a shareable format, he started sharing them on Facebook, which kind of became like his hobby in like the final years of his life. Oh, so it, it honestly, to me, um, he did end up paying me later on, but I didn't get paid at first. Mm -hmm. To me, it was like, it was a labor of love because I realized that I was the only person in the family who was willing to do it. And this was when my daughter was really young. So very similar to, like you said, I was just able to do it on my own time. Um, and I, you know, cr created this like organized library of, of photos for him where he had, I mean, he had 70 years of photography, his entire life's work was in there. Um, but then when he was able to like tell those stories and share the picture, it became like alive for him again. And, and I know that it meant the world to his, to his family that he was able to do that. It just kind of gave him, it gave him like the passion about telling the stories again. And so that, you know, I really meant that. And it was, comes from a very personal way when I was talking about an aging population who really, really cares about this. And they don't necessarily have a family member who's like, please let me do this for you. You know? Um, can I just say, first of all, goosebumps. I love that story. <laughs> I really do. I mean, this is still, this is why I do what I do. Yeah. And I want people to also remember that there are those people, that aging population, that we're going to mm -hmm. lose those stories if people I know. Don't sit down with them, <laughs> if people don't take the time, if there isn't a family member interested, and maybe there is a family member interested, maybe they'll pay for it, but they don't have the time, right? Yeah. So we as organizers in our business have the time. And so when I sit down and, and you know, a grandma clasps my hand and says, do you, and actually I, I remember this so well, and this has been at least five years ago, probably longer. I have no sense of time anymore. Yeah. Um, my daughter came with me to deliver something to a client and it was a grandmother and, and we just had some neat things in common and I spent some sessions with her and she looked at my daughter and said with tears in her eyes, do you know how important the work that your mother does is? And I'm like, Oh, and you know, I, I'm, I can't tell my kids that I'm like, do you guys know how important the work <laughs> is, right? They, they really, I mean, my kids have grown up in a photo mom house and they, th they thought for years that everyone had albums like we did. And, and then when people yeah. come over and their friends pull albums off and they're like, wow, they you know, I, I'm like a nerdy photo mom, but my kids just grew that grew up. So that was their normal. They mm -hmm. now as adults have discovered that nobody else had that. <laughs> they're wow. Like, they're like, uh, okay. And so we've got to do that. I mean, I think, you know, when you talk about serving, mm -hmm. I live to serve to help people tell their stories. And I want that to happen for them. And, and however we could do that. And one of the ways that I can do that is by training more people to be photo organizers. Yes. I cannot help the world. Right. right? Like, <laughs> exactly. I mean, I can handle five clients, right? That, that mm -hmm. I work with, you know, consistently on an ongoing basis. And oh, one more good thing about clients. So long term. I yeah. am not a <laughs> fan of finding new clients. I don't right. want to be always marketing right? So my clients, long term, we work together for a long, long time because after we get through, you know, I'm on album number 36 for one of my clients right now. We're wow. doing three volumes for 2019 and she loves her photos and we have a library of memories of all matching photo albums. And she just said to me two days ago, I said, I think it's going to be three volumes again because of the quantity of pictures and their travels and everything and their very rich, beautiful yeah. life. And she said, yeah, I thought so. She didn't yeah. say, no, no, can we cram it into one? She said, right. yep, three. And that's a lot of work for me. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's out oh, there. So I, that, I, I, I cannot tell you how, this is what I'm saying is that I think that the best businesses, they're not just smart strategically, but they also have a true impact that, like you said, once you start talking to people about it, you don't even have to sell it because they just sign themselves up. They're like, yes, I don't want to go through life and not have all this stuff treated like it's important and then potentially just lose it later because I can't even remember why I took the picture in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. So and it, it really brings together how 
you know, how important and what an impact it has and, and how smart strategically that you've put yourself in this place. And now you're helping build an army of people who can also do these things, which is also really smart. Absolutely. It's, it's just the best of everything to, to find your passion and then go out there and, you know, build a business based around that. I mean, we read it in all the books, but how does that really happen if, if you don't, there's so many people that who isn't passionate about photos and stories. Like when you start right. talking to people and tell them, tell me about your favorite photos and where they are and all of that. So how you can put this right into your organizing business in the world that you and I live in with organizers is mm -hmm. a beautiful thing. So I, I hope more people will want to do it. Well, tell us a little bit about it. So you have, you do have a, a training program so that people don't have to figure this out on your own, which is just like, <laughs> the best that saves you all this time and stress about like how to learn and what you need to know and what you don't know that you don't know, which is half the battle. So tell, tell people um, a little bit about that program and how it works and where they can find more information if they want to, you know, dig deeper into this. So pposstudio.com, just go there and they can see that we have a starter system, very affordable starter system that they can, you know, start practicing with their own photos or uh, relatives if they want to and see if they like it. Or, you know, I say don't even, I mean, I do say that, but I also say just call it a client, call it. Call someone and tell them that you're doing this right now and then figure yeah. it out as you go. Uh, you can do that. But um, the starter system is a great place to start. And then we have a membership site, which is ppoinsider.com. And that's where you can have, you know, the like-minded community in a forum, in the private forum. We don't do the Facebook community. We do the private forum inside the membership. And mm -hmm. there's a digital photo organizing course that's included in membership uh, so that you can get started right away. You can get certified in there if you want to. You don't have to be certified. I've listened to you about certification. I feel the same way. Didn't, you know, what is that? It's great if you want to add a credential, but you don't need it. Just right. do it. Yeah. Just do it. You could People do it. People need so. you now. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, they can go visit um, those websites and, and take a look. PPO Studio kind of is the uh, portal to everything photo organizing. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Gosh. Okay, Shara. So I know that one of your one of one of the things that's important to you is you know empowering women to talk about money and profitability and you really like you really illustrated that through this conversation i mean it's one thing to say that that's important but like you have you you have your business and then you've built this other business that helps people make money from their passion i just I really want to thank you for like what you're doing because I do think that it is it is so needed. Like, is there anything just is there anything else that you can share with our audience, whether they are interested in photo organizing or not? That's just like a takeaway for you about being paid well to do something that someone else needs and that you are really good at and you really love. I have three daughters, Jen, and a son. And one of the my goals as a mom was to raise strong women. And one of the ways to do that was to make sure they weren't afraid to talk about money. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, men, you know, they don't apologize for the things that women apologize for. And that's being in business and earning money. And mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I'm putting that out there in the world. So whatever that business is, even if we weren't talking about organizing and we, you and I were just talking about helping women start businesses, because I think that's your gift and maybe mine as well, that you can do this and you can be profitable and you don't have to give your time and services away because somehow we're wired as moms and, and not all, all moms. I mean, even if you're not a mom, women in general uh, are wired to be caregivers and caretakers and say, oh, no, no, I, you know, I don't need to charge for that, right? Mm -hmm. Like you said, you, you told the grandfather story and you said, I wasn't going to charge for it. <laughs> <laughs> because that just comes to us naturally like oh no no charge and uh right I, I want people to realize that they can really have a thriving uh career and be a small business owner or an empire business owner right build an yeah. empire however they want it uh and they could do it and they can do it as moms and daughters and sisters and and make money and make a difference it's big I, I love that. You actually have brought tears to my eyes several times in this conversation and we've never even talked before today, but that you're exactly right. Like, I think that you and I do both have that at like the heart of why we do what we do, uh, is, is to not just, 
not just give people permission, but really, really help them feel confident about the relationship between what they are doing to serve and also being paid in real actual money and not just getting a scanner or like free clothes because your client <laughs> gave it away. I mean, I know I do feel like that's kind of where people start, but then once they get a hold of like the vision for what it can be, they can grow it into something much, much bigger. So uh, uh, Jen, we can do um, <laughs> another podcast another day on how to start on a shoestring and oh, yeah. spend too much yep. money, right? And, and up front. And there's, there are smart ways to do that. But then it's all about earning a paycheck as well. I mean, earning yeah. money and, and owning that, right? That confidence that you, that, women need more of. We just, we need more women cheering on women and collaborating together and not competing. So that's, that's my thing. And it's always been my thing. Yeah. So I love it. Shara, thank you so much. This was a a timely, very timely conversation, of course, with a timeless need. When you said that the the need for storytelling and and photos and all that is never going to go away, but I think this was a perfect time for us to bring our minds together on this conversation. And I really appreciate that it happened on my podcast. It means the world to me. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. I will see you next time. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the Pro Organizer Studio Podcast. If you'd like to learn more about time-saving services and resources for professional organizers, visit www.proorganizerstudio.com. And if you'd like to get Jen's roadmap to success for launching and growing your professional organizing business, go straight to www.poroadmap.com.